Nice. Alrighty. Uh, this camera on a stand here to lift it up higher. To get a better view here. So, let me make it look like I'm not such a slob when I work. Got a dog here on me. So this is Bella, beautiful golden doodle. And whenever I post her on Instagram, um, one of the features that people always mark about is her beautiful long eyelashes. Look how long they are, look at that. I don't want to accidentally pull it out. <laughs> but it's huge, it looks so long, right? See that, so beautiful. And it looks like she's been losing some of her eyelashes because it used to be much thicker than that. But now, you know, but there's still, you can still see the few strain, strands of that long hair, the eyelash. And her mom loves to save that. And so I got all the clipper work done. See, she's already a really nice shape and combed out. So now I just got to scissor, do the scissor work and finish. I figured right before I started head, I was like, you know what? Let me do one more demonstration. I think I've shown this before, but people asked again. And I don't expect people to go back and find the old videos and watch them again, you know? I barely do that. So uh, I just figured, okay, since people are asking, how do I save the eyelashes? I'll just go ahead and show one more time while I'm grooming Bella here, finishing her up. So let's see. What I'm going to do first is like I always like to do right in between the eyes with the thinners, the other side of the cutting blade. So right in between the eyes first. All right, so we're going to just comb right in between the eyes, get all that hair up. Right, and make sure that eyelash, the long eyelash is out of the way. Right? Oop, I gotta tighten that. There we go. So I'm gonna get it right there and just scoop all that out. See that? Just scoop all of that out. And I'm gonna make a little 45 degree angle. Awesome, Bella. Thank you for being really patient, me. Okay, so if you can, can you tell the difference between this side that I, that I just trimmed and this other side, right? So this side here, what I can do now is comb this up, right? Get a nice rounded shape, comb that up, and then right here, just kind of trim the top, all that long hair. And with thinners, you can bounce because you're not going to make any sharp lines. <clears throat> so, you know, sometimes I do bounce the thinners when I trim, kind of like that, kind of pulling up the hairs that I want to trim next. But you, I, you know, you don't want to do that with regular shears. So sometimes if I find myself kind of getting into the, to getting too comfortable and I'll make myself actually do real cuts and not bounce the shears, because if you start getting in the habit of bouncing shears around, when it comes time to hold the regular shears and you got to hold them really still and, and make precision cuts, you know, it's a little bit tougher because you're getting into the habit of bouncing them. But anyways, so that's that side. It's all nice and clear now. Now we're going to do the other side. So I know you're thinking, um, this is supposed to be a video about the eyelashes. Why are you trimming in between the eyes? Well, it's because this actually gives me it sets the the length, I guess, and the, and the shape. So I have to have that set first, so then I can comb this up and pull this forward and trim that later, and you'll see. But it's because this hair, all this long hair is gonna get in the way if I don't trim it. There we go. Let me get on this side. Go. Alrighty. So even though you can't really make too bad of a, you know, mistake or, or you know, with the thinner, so you can bounce them around. Another good reason why it's not a good idea to get into too much of a habit, get too comfortable bouncing them 
is because especially around here in the eyes, if you bounce around here too much, you can actually catch the skin. So you wanna be able to get really close but not actually bounce in. See that? All righty. Good girl. So now that we have both sides trimmed up, there we go. There we are. Can you see them? You can see right into both of our eyes. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, now, because we're gonna do save the eyelashes, usually I would comb the visor forward like this, right? And then just scissor across. But because we're gonna save the eyelashes, I'm gonna do one side and the other. So I'll show you how I do that. Let me go ahead and change scissors. Shark fins that I just got. Isn't that beautiful? Oh man, look at me using some good tools. Shoot, <laughs> I remember somebody was like, surely if he was balling, he would, he would use better tools. You now, baby, balling. No, I'm just kidding, I'm really not. <laughs> Sue, what's up? How was your lobster? Oh my goodness, I, so Sue, man, I didn't even share the picture because I felt so heartbroken over it. So I put the two lobsters in the sink last night, you know, and I rinsed them off and I was getting the water ready. What's up, Kimberly C? Um, and then, oh, thinners versus chunkers. Okay, I will. So um, I had my, the lobsters, you know, in my sink, in my kitchen sink. And one of the lobsters put his claw over the other one, like they were, like he was comforting the other one, like it's all right. And I took a picture of it because I was like, oh, that's so cute. He's putting his claw over the other one. But then I realized, I'm about to cook these guys, you know, like. <sighs> so I did enjoy the meal. You know, I did enjoy the lobster, of course, but man, I just kind of felt so sad. And so, like, man, I just killed those guys, you know? But for me, I don't know. I feeling sad and guilty and like, oh, I'm such a horrible person for doing that. I wanna, I told myself, I'm going to honor this, the life that I took, you know? Like, I'm gonna honor that lobster's life by doing my best, you know? It's like something had to die for, in order for me to continue to live. And I understand that now, you know? I think we lose that connection to our food because we're so, you know, they're just packaged nicely in the grocery store. We forget that an animal had to give their life or a plant had to give its life for us to be able to eat and take that energy into our body so we can continue living. And I think that with that deeper understanding now, I have more respect for the food and I feel like to to not live my best life and to not try to serve others would almost be a dishonor to the life that had, you know, that the life that had to be taken for me to live. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna comb all of the hair up and forward so I can isolate that long eyelash, right? Then I'm gonna use my thumb to, to hold and cover it. See that? So now her eye is actually closed. There we go. And so now that my thumb is covering the eyelashes that I don't want to cut, then I can comb it forward again. And let me come through this side. And then we're going to go right up to where my thumb is. So that, put all that off. Good girl. So, so now that I can see the eyelash, I can avoid it a little bit easier without actually having to use my thumb to cover it. But see that? Now the eyelash is right there. You can see it, right? When she blinks, you can see the eyelash. See that? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so now that we got that eyelash um, to stick out, you know, we got that eyelash showing nicely. Now we're going to do the other side the same way. I really did, for a little bit, I tried to go vegetarian because I felt so bad about, you know, having to take an animal's life for me to live. Um, but then, and, and some of the vegetarians I know were telling me that I did it wrong. I was just trying to eat salads and vegetables. And I just felt my energy level just zapped. I mean, by 3 p.m., like right about now, I would just start feeling 
extremely exhausted, fatigued, you know, just like almost like something was wrong. And I was worried, like, am I getting sick? But then um, I, I remember I was just craving fish for some reason. And they say that your body sometimes craves things because it needs it. I was craving fish and I think it was mussels too. I was like, oh man, I want to eat some mussels. Um, and so I, I bought some fish and then ate that and it felt so much better. And I was just, you know, I was like, man, I got to eat. I got to eat meat. I mean, I, you know, like, so then I started um, thinking, okay, I got to practice my bow and arrow more, you know, because if I'm going to eat meat, then what if I went out and actually hunted the meat that I eat, you know, and actually processed it myself, you know, like clean it and, and do all that, carry it out of the forest. And then I feel like then I would have a deeper connection with the food that I'm eating. I would respect it so much more, honor it because, and none of it would go to waste, you know, because it was, I had to, you know, I had to take that life, I, you know, and I, won't, I don't want it to go to waste. And I, I want to respect that life that I took. So I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe getting into hunting, you know, bow hunting. And I, I find the idea of hunting with a bow appealing because I feel like it's, it's, it levels the playing field and it's a little more fair, you know, than just pointing a rifle and shooting at it. So I want to actually, you know, like the Native Americans did, a hunting knife and just, you know, do it naturally and respect the land. I don't know, I just, <clears throat> so, and, and that's why I, sometimes I like to buy processed meat, like sausages and stuff and just cook that. Cause I feel like <laughs> it's so processed, it's probably not even close to real meat anymore. So, <laughs> so then I have to feel bad. But anyways, oh, and fish oil. I've been taking some fish oil substance, um, supplements and that's been helping a lot. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just shaping everything up here, getting all the little hairs to stick out. Doesn't that look nice? Do you see those eyelashes? Beautiful. Oh. Okay, so Kimberly says, um, talk about thinners and chunkers. Let me do that. So here are my chunkers that I like to use, right? These are chunkers. And see, because the, the gap are a lot longer, these will actually make cuts that you can see. You see the cut lines? These hide the lines. These are kind of like erasers. When you see clipper lines, you can use this to kind of erase the lines. So I'll give you an example. Right here, what if I did like this? Oops, oops, right? Because it actually cuts. Now I have dents right here. I don't know if you can see it, but now I have a couple of dents right there because I did that, right? Now I have some dents right here, it doesn't look good. You can fix those dents with this. See that, just kind of, and I know I said it don't really bounce a lot, but sometimes when you're blending, bounce, and then you can kind of do like that. And even though there's still a dent right there, I can kind of hide it, see, like that. And now, even though that dent's still there, you can hide it a little bit, like that, see that? There we go. And then I can even kind of match it on this other side and make this other side a little shorter. So then it kind of even looks like you did it on purpose. See that? Like that. So that's the difference between chunkers and thinners. Thinners will help you erase the lines like that and it helps blend. Chunkers, these are used more when you're trying to just get rid of bulk and you don't want to, you know, you want to be able to it, this kind of gives you a little bit of leeway, right? Because when you're going down with the shears, if you accidentally make a dip, you know, then that's going to be really bad because you're going to have a big line. With this one, let's just say, right? Watch this. Oh, sorry, girl. There we go. Watch this. See that? It actually cuts. And, and leaves the lines. So this one is good to practice because you're you're gonna practice not bouncing the shears. See that? You're gonna try to keep the, the, it as steady as possible and just trim the tips. See that? Freedom to kind of bounce a little bit more. 
you know, you can kind of bounce into the code a little bit rather than if you were going with um, straight shears or curved shears. So that's the difference between your chunkers and your thinners. See, now your thinners, if you were to go down the leg with your with this, it's not, it's, you're going to go much faster because it's going to actually cut chunks. If you go down the same leg with your thinners, you're going to make a lot more snips. You're going to make a lot more snips. It's going to be a lot harder, take a long time. So it's going to, when you're trying to take length off, this is going to be the, the blenders that you want. They're called blenders or chunkers. Then when you're going to smooth things out and round it, see when I round the foot here, I'm going to go through with the thinners because it's going to give a nice soft look and blend it. So when you're, when you're doing the finishing touches and softening up the look like this, then you can use the, blend, the thinners, right? But if you're trying to take length off, like off the top of the head, if it's long, then you're going to use the blenders or the chunkers. See that? So that's the difference. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, Alan Powell, sock account. <laughs> Tara, hey, what's up, Tara? Uh, I agree, I've learned so much from doing strengths. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. See, so says, someone said they don't know, they didn't know why we had to kill animals for food when all we had to do is go to grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, Sue. Um, Tara, beans. Yeah, I should probably eat more beans. Um, I think a good way to eat meat is to buy from your local farmer's market. Uh -huh. and no, June, don't go hunting. You'll hate it. I live in Pei, and there are so many amazing farmers here who truly raise healthy animals. Awesome, Kimberly. I'm going to have to look into that. Farmer's market. Uh, so pretty. Nice. Dog baby, what's up? Kimberly says, so what What do you use chunkers for? I and I never use them. Like I said, um, for, oh, here's a great example right here. I see some hair sticking out that's a little bit long, right? And with your shears, with the regular shears, you have to be a lot more careful. But here, I could just go through like this with my chunkers. See that? Just kind of saves time. You don't have to be as careful as you are with your shears. And it helps to take length off. It helps to take that length off real quick. So I find I use my chunkers a lot less than my thinner. Useful when I do have to use them. Okay, so um, Sue says, Claire, I can't see June hunting either. He loves animals too much. Yeah, I know. See, that's the thing. I think that when I go hunting, I might cry, actually. When the first kill I make, I probably will cry. And I'm going to feel so terrible. But I think it, that's the... I feel like if I'm going to continue eating meat then I feel like it's almost like, you know, my way of earning the right to eat it, I guess. You know, earn it. I don't know. But you're right. I probably, uh, even the lobsters last night. I mean, I, it's like I was, I, I kind of was in an internal conflict. I said I'm free. Where do I even set them free? They're going to die anyways. You know, if I try to set them free somewhere, I don't know. And then I was like, my brother's waiting for dinner, you know, and I already showed him lobster. I got so excited yesterday because, you know, lobsters are usually $19 a pound here. And I saw them on sale for $6.99 a pound. So I got two lobsters for 19 bucks. I was so excited. And I was like, yes, we get to eat lobster tonight, you know. But then, you know, when it came time to cook it. And the crazy thing is, I've cooked lobsters several times before. You know, especially because my daughters would request it for their birthday or something. They really love lobsters. So I've cooked lobsters several times before, but yesterday for some reason just affected me more. I think it was because I saw the lobsters like holding each other. One had his claws over the other, like he was comforting the other one. I don't know. And also they kind of fought it a little bit when I was putting them into the, into the hot water. I mean, of course they would fight it, right? So I don't know. I think you're right. I think I, I'll enjoy the camping part of it and being out in the wilderness and being out with nature and, you know, that part. Up until the moment I have to actually shoot the animal. I want to do it with, um, which side is that? That's, okay, that's this side. I want, to, I want to do it with bow and arrow. And because, you know, I just feel like, 
I would feel like it was done naturally, like my ancestors before me, kind of honoring that heritage, I guess. Um, but yeah, honoring my ancestors, maybe. Sorry about that. I got disconnected. Um, let's see. Claire says, what's the best way to avoid bowl cut look? Oh, um, you're, it's going to be your thinners and your, and your blenders and just blending it. Continue blending it, you know? Uh, Claire, Sue, exactly. Uh, Kimberly says, ah, oh, it's, it's, so it's a time saver. Yes, that's what it is. That's a good way to put it. Um, Tara, I agree, Sue. I could, I could see him visiting an animal sanctuary farm. Oh, yeah. She says, I have those same chunkers and I love them. Awesome. Uh, Marie, Marie says, hi, Susan Black, what's up? Sue says, June, you would kill them and then try to give them CPR. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, man. So maybe I will just try going um, vegetarian again and just do it differently this time. Maybe add a lot more beans, a um, lot more supplements this time. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because I remember ordering this um, Santa Fe veggie burger at Movie Tavern, and I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, shoot, this veggie burger is good. And I was thinking like, shoot, if this is, if I don't have to sacrifice flavor, you know, shoot, I, I'm down. I am down with this. But then it was my energy levels. Like I really couldn't sustain my, my energy throughout the day. I would get weak and feel so tired fatigued, you know, and so then, you know, I started to eat a little bit more meat in my diet, I put a meat back in, and then I felt better, and so I was like, yeah, I have to eat meat, but then, you know, some people are telling me that, you know, it's just, I was, I was lacking the, you know, B vitamin, or, you know, the B16 or whatever, B6, whatever, those B vitamins that you get from from animals. So I gotta do more research, I guess. Just try to do it again. Cause I do feel bad whenever I eat meat, especially last night cooking those lobsters. Oh man. So I, I didn't even post any photos of it. I did take some pictures of it cause I was proud of the meal that I made, but I just wasn't proud of myself for having to take their life like that. I don't know. And then, you know, that's why I can't allow myself to entertain um, depressive thoughts too, too often. And I, I don't allow myself to sit there and sulk sometimes when things don't work out or things go bad or I'm feeling sad or anything. Because I, I tell myself, I'm wasting the life that I took in order for me to live. You know, like I don't want to live and kind of waste my time and waste the day knowing that some other life form had to die, had to had to give its life for me to continue living, you know, um, in order to show gratitude to that life, whether it's a plant life or animal life, either way, something had to die for me to keep living. And I think that gratitude, you know, is what prevents me from allowing myself to to get down too long. I mean, I get down, every, everybody gets down, especially these days with all the craziness going on in the world right now. Oh man, sometimes I do get down. But, you know, I don't allow myself to stay there, you know? It's like, yeah, you can, you can get down every once in a while, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna unpack your bags and settle in and stay there, you know what I'm saying? Make that your permanent residence. You know, you want to move on. So, and I tell myself that too. If I find myself spending too long, like, you know, if it lasts more than a day, then I tell myself, literally, snap out of it, you know? Because I'm dishonoring the lives that had to be sacrificed for me to live, you know? So anyways, that's just, I don't know, maybe, Maybe I'm just too extreme. I remember several people used to tell me, like, June, 
man, you're intense. <laughs> and I would tell them, like, I'm, what? It's like, I, I try not to be, you know? I, I try to be relaxed and laid back, but I guess I'm not, you know? Like, I have some pretty high standards for myself. And I used to extend it out to others, but then I realized that's not fair. These are my standards for me, you know? Who am I to put that onto anybody else? Because I could be wrong, you know? Or it could, you know, these, the standards that I put on myself may work for me, but it may not work for someone else in their unique circumstances. So, yeah, I just, I realize now though, um, for a while there, I had no idea who I was because I was always, I was so insecure and I was always looking to everyone else and I would draw inspiration from, you know, movie stars, comedians, um, Cesar Milan even, you know, people that I look up to, and I would try to act like them. And it just didn't work because I'm not them. <laughs> you know, and it's like, and then I realized, okay, why don't I just try to be myself? And that doesn't work either because, you know, that kind of defeats the purpose. You shouldn't have to try <laughs> to be what you already are. So then I realized maybe I don't even know who I am. And that took a while, you know, and I think that being alone, being by myself and going through this divorce and just having a lot of alone time, um, it really was good for me because it finally gave me the chance to really sit down and think about it. Who am I really? What are the things that I really like? And what, what is success in my own definition, you know? What, what is the kind of life that I want to live? I don't know. I never really put a lot of thought about it. I always thought about what kind of life would, would make my mom proud, you know? What kind of life could I attain that would make others look up to me, you know? Or like me more, or accept me. You know, it's like... And then I heard this uh, quote by Bob Proctor, where he said, um, and he heard this quote from someone else, I can't remember the name, but he said, if I want to be free, then I've got to be me. Not the me that my parents want me to be, not the me that my wife wants me to be. But if I want to be free, then I've got to be me. So then I better figure out who me really is. And I was like, oh wow, that is so true. Because if I want to be free, then I have to have the courage to be me. But what happens when I don't even know who me is? Because I spent so long avoiding that and trying to be like others. Because I see that they're, I don't know, I look up to them, I see how cool they are or whatever, you know? And because of how, how much I admire them, I'm sitting here trying to act like them, you know? And it's like for the longest time, I feel like I didn't even know who I was. And now, now that I'm more clear, um, I'm much happier. And I realized, like, I don't really even need anybody, you know? Well, I mean, I do need people in my life, of course, but, like, I don't need a partner to validate my value as a human being, you know, or make me feel like I'm worthy of being loved. You know, I don't need a romantic partner for that, you know? There you go. I feel like sometimes too many of us put so much value on having a partner, you know, belonging to someone, you know, I'm, I'm yours, you know, they're mine. And it's like, I don't know, you know, like, some people have been in a relationship their whole life, like in and out, as soon as one relationship ends, they're in another one. And they don't even know who they are outside of a relationship with someone else. And I think that's kind of sad, you know, but yeah, I mean, but I'm not, I, I'm no one to judge because shoot, look at me at age 39, I'm finally starting to figure out who I am, you know, and be okay with it. Not, you know, just accept myself, not say like, oh, you know, that's not good. I gotta, I gotta change who I am, you know? No, I am who I am and that's okay. And you are who you are and that's fine too, you know? Like we shouldn't have to change ourselves in order for people to accept us. Okay, but anyways, <clears throat> so that's basically her head all done with her eyebrow, I mean, not eyelashes. 
So, and her ears are trimmed up now. See that? So now I just have to do her legs and feet. Any more questions here? Oh, what's up, Raquel? Raquel is here. <clears throat> Claire says, would you cry? You would cry. Enjoy the nature. Leave as you found it. Uh-huh. Claire says, your ancestors didn't have farmer's markets. Um, they did it because of necessity. You don't need to prove anything. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Um, Kim really said, and, and also I would, be, I would be supporting the local farmers, you know, the local community. So I really like that idea. Uh, and maybe just go camping. <laughs> just go camping and not actually hunt anything, right? <laughs> um, Kimberly, you probably needed to add in vitamins B supplement. Yeah, I think you're right, Kimberly. Raquel says, another one of your well-behaved dogs. Such a, yeah, right? Oh my goodness, such a treat compared to yesterday. Um, Sue says, they make a liquid B12. I used to carry it with me to work and I felt myself running down. Uh, when I felt myself running down, I took a dropper full of it. Okay, Sue, nice. Okay, B12. Sarah says, animals have feelings and you pick up on that. You are a sensitive being. You are wrestling with the fact that we do not have to buy meat. There are so many excellent meat, dairy, egg supplements. Okay, okay. Claire says, I think the secret of happiness is being happy in your own company and skin. Yes, Claire. Everything else then just follows. Exactly. I figured out myself in my 40s. You're not alone. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. Doll baby, lol. I live off coffee. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. So now I'm just going to finish her up by scissoring and rounding out her feet, trimming up her legs a little bit, make it nice and soft and fluffy. And then she is done. So thank you so much for your time, guys. Hopefully the eyebrows demonstration was helpful. If you want to keep your dog's eyebrow, I mean eyelashes long, and beautiful. I have no preference either way. If she if she told me to cut it, I would cut it. You know, <laughs> it's not my dog, so you know the owner has to look at that, look at it all the time. So for me, I have no preference. I think I do think it's beautiful though. But if she wanted me to cut it, I would cut it. But hey, they love it. I love it. <laughs> if you love it, I love it. <laughs> there we go. Didn't we just talk about knowing who you are and not trying to be like others? <laughs> I like whatever you like. Anyways. Okay. <clears throat> um, Kimberly, I feel like you should hold the grooming secret to happiness retreat. Oh my goodness, Kimberly. You know, that's funny you mentioned that because I actually told myself if I ever start a school, I would like to do that. Like maybe in the summer or something um, when, this, when the students are on break, um, invite pet owners to come to our school and have like a little retreat. And, and we, we can meditate with the dogs, you know, we can walk with them, really bond with the dogs and show how they're, the connection with the dog, how that transfers over to the grooming, you know? And then we could even um, groom dogs together. You know, that's really cool. That's really cool that you mentioned that. Kimberly says, oh, June, I have a question. My mother-in-law has a golden who cannot be bathed because he has a bad, bad heart condition. You know what, if, you're, if it's golden retriever, you're in luck. Because as long as you comb them with a um, metal comb like that all throughout their coat and get that dead hair out each season, you, you don't even have to bathe them. You can just use coat conditioners. Um, but as long as you get that dead hair out. So this is all the hair that I combed out before the bath. So there's more, but this is all the hair that I combed out of her before the bath. And it, it smells, it's nasty, it's rough. So I combed all of this before the bath. So that's why she's so nice and fluffy now, right? Because this is all live hair. So if you've got a golden retriever, it's a double-coated breed, all you got to do is just comb thoroughly, head to toe, and you don't even have to bathe them. Um, let's see. I would, Raquel says, I would go to the retreat. Oh, awesome. Kimberly says, he is so impacted with dead coat and he's greasy. I want to help, exactly, that dead coat is impacted, get that out of there. And then he's going to feel nice and smooth, put some coat conditioners on there, he won't even smell. It'll be like he had a beautiful bath, he'll feel nice and smooth um, without actually having to wash him. Um, let's see, would you use any products in particular? I mean, no, I wouldn't even, 
I would even just use this even, you know, like I stopped by Petco and bought this on a, on a bit because I was in a bind. I ran out of coat conditioner, but I mean, you can use this, you know, this is a good one I've been using, Ice on Ice by Chris Christensen. But yeah, I mean, I, you know me, I'm not really into brands. <clears throat> Just whatever, whatever you prefer. You could even use distilled water if you wanted to. Um, Claire says, that sounds awesome. Oh, like heaven, a happy dog retreat. I would, I would love to do that, yeah. You know, do some um, guided meditations with our dogs and learn to, because there's actually programs out there where you learn to breathe with your dog. You match their breathing, right? If they're, then you match it. And then you slowly start to slow your breathing down. You see that? I can't believe that worked. I can't believe that worked. I got on camera. So she was breathing hard. I started breathing like her. I slowed down. She slowed down. Oh my goodness. Anyways, when you, because I'm a Jedi master, when you reach my level of enlightenment, right? All right, give me some tongue. Anyways, <laughs> wow. But yeah, so we could do some guided meditations with our dogs. After that, maybe walk a nice trail in the forest, you know, in the woods. And then after that, we can sit down and brush them, right? Brush all the, the whatever, um, you know, branches, twigs, you know, tangles, maybe even mud and dirt. We'll brush that out of their coat after the walk, right? And then the dogs that need haircuts, we could even, you know, show the, the pet owners how to hold those shears properly, what shears to use in what situations, you know, like a real DIY retreat. That'd be amazing, you know, and make it a spiritual retreat, right? I mean, not religious, spiritual, and we honor the light in all of us, right? In the dogs as well, because they're living, breathing, sentient beings, and they have feelings and thoughts about everything, you know? So yeah, I mean, that would be something special. It really would. I would love to be a part of it. Even if I'm not the one that organizes it or does it, if somebody else holds an event like that, I would definitely be there. Okay. <clears throat> I would definitely support something like that. All right, guys. <clears throat> so I'm going to finish her up. Uh, Raquel, you cracked me up. <laughs> Kimberly really says, not June the groomer, it's June the... No. There, I hear there's a very fine line between guru and jerk. <laughs> so I don't even want to, I don't even want to walk it. Um, Claire says, I love, I love it. Get that program online because I can't come on, I can't come in Scott. Uh-huh. What if we went to Scotland and did it? You know what I'm saying? The beautiful landscape there in Scotland. Uh, Kimberly says hashtag June's grooming retreat. <laughs> Shoot, should I should I do like a Kickstarter or something? Oh, I heard Kickstarter went out of business. Anyways, um, June says, or I will have to save up. No, Claire, what if we went to you over there in Scotland? And then I would love to, to tour some of those distilleries where they make scotch, you know, and they leave it, they have it in the barrels for like 12, 13 years. It's an art, you know? I would love to go and see it, taste it right out of the barrel. Um, Claire says, ye, ye come to Scotland, yay, ye, she's saying ye, ye come to Scotland, <laughs> she's, she's bringing out the old talk, oh ye, Asian man, come overseas too, <laughs> it is beautiful, nice, I know it's beautiful, I've seen pictures, so, and I, I hear that the scotch tastes different based on where the scotch is made. And that's why, like, the Highlands and the Islay and all of that. And the, the gentleman that was explaining it to me, he told me that it's the water, not only the water, but the peat, I guess, the earth, that tastes different in each region of Scotland. And he's saying that that's why every bottle of scotch tastes different, a little different. He was saying that even um, when, if you get two Macallan bottles side by side, they're going to taste a little bit different because each bottle is its own artistic, you know, creation. And it took years, you know, decades 
to create that art inside of a bottle. And oh man, once I get a few shots in me, I get so creative. I'm just kidding. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, I would love, I would love to go to Scotland and just tour those distilleries, see how, you know, meet the people who, the scotch makers, you know. Anyways, there's so much to do, you know, in this world. I just, wow, I feel like, how can anybody spend any time feeling bored? You know, just make a plan to do some of the things <coughs> that are available here on Earth, you know? Well, there's far too much to take in years. Um, shoot, I forget the name. <laughs> <laughs> More to do than can ever be done. Well, there's more to see than can ever be seen. Shoot, I don't want to get fired. <laughs> more to do than can ever be done. It's a circle of... Oh, <laughs> Y'all thought I was done. No, shoot. I hope the owners don't think that somebody's dying down here. Okay. Like, what is that screeching? What is that noise down there? Like, don't worry about it. I told you. Don't, don't come in. Don't come and check no matter what you hear. Okay. But anyways, um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really digressing. So there's the eyelashes. And that's how you save it. Boom. See you guys. Oh, hold on. So. It, uh -huh. Better in real life. Claire. Oh, huh. Um. Defo the earth. Uh-huh. Uh, Tara says, yay, this sounds fun. Whatever it is, awesome. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching, guys. That's how you do it. I'll see you later. Uh, Kimberly says, thanks for hanging out with us. No, Kimberly, thank you for hanging out with us. Shoot, Bella and I, I appreciate your time. Hopefully it was worth it. But anyways, thanks so much, Kimberly. Claire says, uh, Scotland is awesome. West Coast Highlands. Then you can go over to Ireland. <laughs> That's the plan. Sorry, Bella. Didn't mean to accept. <laughs> That's the plan, Claire. Oh, man. But anyways, before I get too carried away, because, you know, I could start. I could get lost in a rant and just go on for hours. So I'll see you guys. Have a great day and have a great weekend. And you know what? Seriously, let's be the light in the world, right? Shine our light in the world because it is getting really dark out there. See you guys.